Hi! Welcome to Surviving Schizophrenia with Stephen. My name is Stephen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm here with my dad today. I'm Steve, Stephen's dad. And we're going to talk about if schizophrenia can be diagnosed by looking at a person's eyes. Now, there's been new research lately that has shown that might be possible. And we're going to discuss that today. Yeah, there's been some uh, exciting research uh, just uh, earlier this year, January of 2023, and last year, May of 2022, on the issue of visual you know, um, abnormalities in schizophrenia or psychosis, and whether those visual abnormalities, uh, one, exist um, and can be then the predictors for schizophrenia or can diagnose schizophrenia. We're also going to follow up then with Stephen's visual issues, yes, including visual hallucinations, because we have seen, um, and Stephen has experienced, some abnormalities in his vision. I definitely have, and we'll get to that in a bit. Right, and then we'll wrap we'll wrap it up, Stephen. If it's okay with you, just talking about this last week, and you know how you know how you've been. It, it you've been you know you've appeared somewhat uh, anxious and I'm yeah. concerned. That maybe there's some sensory overload, which is a, a symptom of schizophrenia. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have a little bit of sensory overload right now. So, we, so we'll definitely talk about that in a bit. Okay, so we'll follow up at the end of this video and maybe just chat about that, uh, you know, as uh, as we go. So let me start. Let's start with the the, the background um, before we talk about the two studies, the two recent studies on abnormalities in eye movement. Um, and eye structure and whether that is it can be a biomarker, right? An objective test for de determining whether someone has schizophrenia or may develop schizophrenia or may develop psychosis. So the background is that there many studies have shown that people with schizophrenia have dif difficulty with smooth pursuit eye movements, which are necessary for tracking moving objects with their eyes. Uh, studies have also shown, and these are over the last um, decade or so, or two decades, have shown that people with schizophrenia sometimes have smaller pupil diameter. That also people with schizophrenia have reduced contrast sensitivity, and that's the ability to distinguish between objects of varying shades. And that people with schizophrenia show sometimes altered retinal functioning. And this is the functioning of the light sensitive uh, cells in the eye. And if I could say something real quick, I think I'm feeling that like right now. Um, it's not that bright out. It's relatively sunny outside, but it's affecting my eyes right now as I'm looking ahead. Right. So Stephen has had this light sensitivity, and we'll yeah. discuss. We'll discuss like that. Kind of like like this. Right. Okay. So we're facing the backyard. We're facing a, a, a picture window, yeah. a sl big a glass slider, and the light, the natural light is, in, is shining on us. We have no uh, other artificial light right now nope. on us. But it is fairly bright, but I'm able to you know, look at the camera and, and not have any problems. And Stephen is... I'm having issues on us. So. Yeah. So with that background in the research, that you know, the studies have shown these abnormalities in the eyes. Um, for people with schizophrenia. And there have been two articles, and this is very exciting. One article um, is was it published May 20th of 2022, published in the Schizophrenia Bulletin Open. The publisher is Oxford University Press. This is coming out of the UK. And the authors are David St. Clair and Graeme McLennan. And the, the article is entitled, Eye Movement Patterns Can Distinguish Schizophrenia from the major affective disorders and healthy control subjects. And I'll just uh, look at two, uh, two issues here, and then we'll go to the next study that was in January of this year. But this study evaluated the potential eye movement behavior patterns to predict schizophrenia subjects compared to those with major affective disorders and control groups. So that's looking, the study was looking at you know, schizophrenia in the, uh, the eyes Schizophrenia versus um, other uh, versus major affective disorders. Okay, an affective disorder would be um, major depressive disorder, 
It would be bipolar disorder, and there are a number of other uh, affective disorders. So those would be, and then obviously the control group would be uh, people that don't have any of those issues. And the conclusion out of this May 20th, uh, 2022 study was that eye movement patterns can discriminate schizophrenia from major mood disorders and control subjects with around 80% predictive accuracy. So that's pretty amazing. That's, that is, that's, that's pretty good. And then coming also out of Oxford University Press is the publisher, a publication, Schizophrenia Bulletin Open, January 3rd, 2023. That's this year. And the authors, uh, uh, Lou Haylong and also David Sinclair. And this, this is an article entitled, Eye Movement Abnormalities Can Distinguish First Episode Schizophrenia, comma, Chronic Schizophrenia, comma, and prodromal patients from healthy controls. So this is incredible. And the background of, says to this study that the study attempts to replicate in a Chinese population an earlier UK report that eye movement abnormalities can accurately distinguish schizophrenia cases from healthy controls. And the conclusion was that the findings replicate and extend the UK results on that same subject. The overall accuracy of the Chinese study is virtually identical, it says, to the UK findings. And the conclusion is we conclude that eye movement abnormalities appear early in the natural history of the disorder and can be considered as a potential trait markers for schizophrenia diathesis. The interesting, the very, uh, and that's amazing because why is this important? And why would it be important to us and for Stephen? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Let's, the, the first thing is that if schizophrenia at some point in our history can be diagnosed by going to the optometrist, right, and having an eye exam, one, it could be diagnosed potentially prior to the onset of schizophrenia. Which would be fantastic. The sooner you can catch schizophrenia, the better. And if we could see someone at a just an eye exam and say, hey, you're going to get schizophrenia, say, soon or in a year. Or, whatever or you might get schizophrenia. Exactly. Right. We could then keep an eye on that person, right? We could help them get the right medicine sooner. Maybe they wouldn't even enter a psychosis, or if they did, it'd be shorter time because they'd have the right medicine. We'd expect it and we'd see it coming. All right. Looking at you, Stephen, when, you, when you're saying that, I was thinking back when you were 10 and 11, mm -hmm. prior to the onset of your psychosis, and just looking at you, Stephen, here while we're on camera, um, wow, I just kind of almost teared up because, mm -hmm. yes, if, 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 if during one of Stephen's eye exams, when he was 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, right, prior to psychosis, could have told us, hey, look, oh, wow, you know, there's a smooth eye pursuit issue here with Stephen. You know, his retinals maybe are, are smaller than other people. And you know what? Dad, you know, and mom, you know, or Stephen, you know, this, this could be a sign that you might have psychosis later or you might slip into psychosis and develop schizophrenia. You know, so, you know, we, we would, that would have been valuable information for us. Okay, very valuable. That really would have been. And, and then as Stephen slipped into psychosis, you know, in late 2011, early 2012, we could have then, with not, with that knowledge, have, have gotten hopefully Stephen in faster mm -hmm. to to and, and had better understanding yeah. about what was going on here with Stephen. Yeah. Instead and, of scrambling to find out what was going wrong, we could just be like, okay, it's probably schizophrenia. Let's treat that. Right. Instead or, of let's treat the headaches, let's treat the pain he's feeling, let's treat this, let's treat that. Pre precisely. Because early um, detection of psychosis and schizophrenia and early prevention is critical to recovery. The, the illness um, gets, wor gets progressive, progressively worse, the studies have shown, uh, if it's untreated. And it can lead to, of course, all kinds of you know, suicide and, and other you know, um, maladaptive behaviors. And, you know, or even just damage to your brain. And, and brain damage, right. Psychosis is damaging to the brain. We know that, studies have shown that. So with that exciting research, uh, Stephen, what, you know, what are your visual abnormalities or, any, or issues that you've seen since onset of schizophrenia? If you can 
Yeah, so since my onset, well, I should start before. Before, I I didn't have the best eyesight, but I didn't have any kind of visual, visual hallucinations or really any issues with my eyesight other than just needing glasses for a while. But after my schizophrenia, actually, I think one of the earliest things that happened was I would see spots, particularly when I was tired, and I still do to this day. Sometimes they'll be like stars almost, like little bright lights shooting across my field of vision, right? It feels like I'm gonna pass out, at least not necessarily that I would pass out, but just that it looks like I'm going to. Is it that, that intense? I mean, it's- It can be. It feels like, I don't know, I've seen like movies when I was gonna pass out where it gets like bright and you see stars and they pass out. Now I've never passed out, but it kind of, in my opinion, it looks like I am when I'm that tired and I see those spots and those stars. And I remember that was particularly an issue in the first two to three years yeah. after falling ill with schizophrenia and psychosis. Is it still now, we're, we're 11 years past that point, um, are you still seeing those occasionally? Yes, but it's not as bad as it was five years ago, 10 years ago. So what other vi visual issues have you experienced, Stephen? Uh, I remember, I guess this was the sixth grade, so this was even before I was diagnosed, before I really felt ill. Um, I went to a Catholic school and I was on the student council there. Um, I was commissioner of religious affairs and I remember we had um, a student council meeting. I don't remember much of that meeting, but I do remember evidently just staring at one of the girls there, but I didn't realize I was staring at her. And I was so completely lost in thought that I didn't notice what I was looking at. Evidently I was staring at her and she, after I don't know how long of that, it must have been a few minutes at least. She looks at me and like laughs and like, I'm too old for you. And I was like, what? You were staring at me. Huh? I, I didn't realize I was staring at her. I didn't realize really what was going on at all really at the time. And I definitely didn't realize that I was looking at anything in the first place. I was so lost in thought. So I guess that counts as a visual issue too. Yeah, it could be, it could be, but it could be, uh, you know, um, sometimes uh, when you're thinking about something, um, you just kind of stare out in the space, That's so true, to speak. But I don't <clears throat> remember what I was looking at. Right. I so, was looking at anything. So this must have occurred a few months before the onset of psychosis. Probably. And you, do you recall, because you were on the student council. Yeah. I was in an elected position in, in sixth grade. It was the first semester of sixth grade. So it was right before the psychosis hit. You said, you know, one thing that you just commented, Stephen, do you remember, you said, do you remember what they were talking about during? No. That's how zoned out I was. I have no recollection of anything else that happened at that meeting, except that short little bit. You have much recollection of that first semester in sixth grade? This is the few months before the psychosis No, uh, most of my memory is kind of wiped from that time. Interesting, interesting. The most I remember of middle school was lying in the, off uh, the nurse's office in pain. Any other visual issues that you can uh, think you had? Yeah, um, sometimes my vision does get kind of blurry. I don't know where to go with that, but right. I've noticed that, especially when I'm tired. I also know when I am tired, I think this is more common in general, but I've noticed with myself, my eyes will cross sometimes. Like I'll be looking at something. Usually, I, I was gonna say late at night, but it's not usually that late for me. For me, it's late. We're talking like 8.30, 9 o'clock. And I'll just see it and go and Then I see double, I'm like, ooh, nope, nope, getting tired, okay. Recorrect. Okay, so switching, uh, switching topics here, Stephen, can we talk a little bit about um, how you've been doing this last few days? Yeah, for sure. I see some, you know, some anxiety and stress. Yesterday, um, we were talking, Stephen, mm -hmm. um, and I noticed you were anxious. And kind of more we talked, you even got a little more anxious. And then we talked about maybe that this is a sensory overload, mm -hmm. which is a, which is a, um, you know, it's a symptom of schizophrenia. Sensory overload and processing a lot of information um, is 
becomes an issue with cognitive issues with schizophrenia. We saw that yesterday. So can we talk a little bit about how you're doing, Stephen? Yeah, so I guess this is common when I am, I guess, having some issues. I don't really realize what it is until you mentioned that yesterday. I was like, oh, sensory overload. That makes sense. And yeah, I, I'm going to Texas in a little under two weeks now. Um, so having that overlay on top of just my normal routine has been a little too much for me. I'm usually about capacity with just what I do normally, so I think adding on my trip to Texas where I'm going alone to visit family there. So I've never done that before. I'm excited for that, it'll be awesome. and I'm really happy I'm going. But it's taking up a lot of mental energy for me. And I think that's causing me to be a bit anxious right now. Right, so that's, and you know, going on a trip, so Stephen's gonna go for 10 days. Yes. As he said, he's gonna um, he's going alone. So I'm gonna drop him at uh, LAX. I'll, I'll walk in and but he'll go through TSA, mm -hmm. and then uh, it's a three hour flight from Los Angeles to San Antonio, Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll probably be sitting near the front. He'll be one of the first yeah, to board. Yeah, I will be. Uh, but we're not getting any special treatment for Stephen. They're not no. gonna know he has schizophrenia. Um, no. We're not alerting the airlines or anything to that. Because um, I believe you can let them know and i think if you have any kind of disability or things like that right they will help you out and you can maybe board earlier right but i don't feel i really need that kind of treatment right now i i, I don't feel like i need it so i'm not going to ask for it i think that would be for people that would need it more than me right and steven's uh, going to board early anyways but yeah. we've got we uh but yeah there's that you know part of this is normal in the sense that if you're going on a trip it's uh, it's exciting. You have all you know. You got to make sure you're packed and everything you're going to take, and you know. But you know, for someone with schizophrenia, it is a um, it's it's a big it's a big deal, yeah. um, and it's a big step. Um, I was going to fly out with Stephen and then spend the night and fly back, mm -hmm. and uh, Stephen said, uh, "No, I'm going to I'm going to go out by myself. You know, Maria's going to go pick him up after the ten yeah. days. She's going to fly out, spend the night, and come back with Stephen." And but you know this is a big step and you know I and it, I we've talked about it uh, Stephen and I have, yes, and, and Maria as well in the last few days um, and you, um, you you keep saying you know that you, you've been pretty steadfast that you you believe you can do it you want to do it yourself I out. know I can do it and I want to prove that to myself too especially for the future right eventually I'm gonna have to go somewhere on my own why not start now. I think that's great, Stephen. I mean, I really do. And you're going to do fine. You're going to do fine. And uh, so that's that's awesome. So I think that that with Stephen going to Texas for 10 days and a couple of weeks here, um, he's going to be out there with family. But Maria and I um, have just this month celebrated our 35th wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be taking you know a separate trip um, in California here for a few days and uh, just getting away um, and celebrating our 35th. And while Stevens in Texas, and then uh, we'll I'll be back here, uh, you know, the uh, mid uh, mid April. So, but yeah, sensory overload and you know sensory processing is is an issue and and with with everyone, but particularly with people with schizophrenia, it is dif you know difficult um, to process um, a lot of uh, different variables that are coming at you, and um, you know that's uh, I think that's good for for us you know that don't have the illness to understand that someone with schizophrenia might you know need more time doing things even going through tsa i think steven yeah. is anxious about going just through the tsa i, I am a bit and i've told i, Stephen, I guess just not going through tsa right and i've told Stephen, you know they're they're there to help you and you know the, and the traveling public but they're, for me it's you're so rushed there i feel right and i don't like to be rushed right so I think that, uh, yeah, that's part of the cognitive issues with schizophrenia. And it's important for us to understand that, you know, we need to slow down, mm -hmm. you know, kind of reduce the stress. And with that, you know, you, um, you can feel a lot better. I mean, we were going to shoot this video uh, yesterday and we decided to hold it to today. And then even today it was, uh, we, we didn't know whether we were going to shoot it, did we? No, because I yeah. just feel overwhelmed. Right. It's a lot for me to take in. It's like, you know, if you're talking to someone that's fine, right? But then if you're talking to like three people at once, it's kind of how like I feel. You just feel overwhelmed and you're like, wait, one, one thing at a time here. 
Yeah, and what we when I saw um, Stephen's dad in the last couple of days, he's, you know, his eyes in the morning and even during the day would be kind of glassy, yeah. so kind of glassy eyed, uh, flatter effect, not not smiling really, just looking tired. Like, like and, he, and you said you're looking really tired. You, yeah, you know, we walked, went out for a, uh, about a mile and a half walk yesterday, and, and then, the day before I went for a, like three and a third mile walk as well. Right, which so, helped, but I was still. Yeah, kind of out of it. Yeah, and your diet hasn't changed. You know, we try to, really try, yeah, you know, the medication hasn't changed. So we try to, you know, say, well, what's going on? And, and things fluctuate, right? It's not. They do. Yeah, it's not a linear progression. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's good for us to to recognize that and to recognize that yeah, Stephen is you know struggling there. You know, pull back, find out you know what, what we can do to help. Until know. I can kind of bounce back. Right. Because I always do eventually. Yeah, and you're looking a lot better today, Stephen. I so do feel I'm, better. I'm glad uh, yes. for shooting this today. Yeah. So, we hope you enjoyed this video, maybe learned something, and we appreciate you having you here. And we hope you have a happy and healthy rest of your day, and hope to see you in the next video. Bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye.